Hello everyone! Rick and Ryan are at it again. It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Well, 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 welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? I am good. How about yourself, sir? You know, bro, I can't complain, and it wouldn't do me any good if I could. I'm just trying to make it every day, and uh, I'm sure everybody else out there is as well. That's why we got a really good one for them. Yes, sir. Now, you guys out there are going to find that the name of this episode is How to Be a Failure in Five Easy Steps. That does not mean that we want you to fail. It's We're quite experts. the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> quite the opposite. We want you to succeed. We want you to tap into that potential and do what you want to do. And, uh, you know, maybe we can rub off on each other today and uh, we can take things to the next level as well. But before we get started with that topic, uh, how was your weekend, man? It was good. It was good. Uh, did got a little fishing in, um, spent Easter with the family. It was good. How was your trip? It was great. It was great. You know, got to be in the Death Star without it exploding. So that's one for me, zero for Darth Vader. Um, had a really good time saw the sights ate the eights and uh just enjoyed the uh concert and had a good trip did you win any money you know what fun fact and i told this to heather too i didn't gamble once didn't place one bet i'm proud of myself for that i uh, should have bet one time nah i know how my luck is that would have been the time that I would have lost. I would. I, I don't win when I expect to win. Penny Which slot. Is, you you can afford afford to lose a penny. Uh, probably did that, yeah, but you know, <laughs> if I was gonna go anywhere, I was gonna play that uh, either that blackjack table or um, some roulette. And that, if I go to if I ever go to Vegas, trust me, I'm gonna make at least one bet just to say I did. Well. I am thinking about a uh, boys' trip in the next year. Excellent. Or so so uh, I'm, I'll keep. I'm you posted. thinking about going with you. All right. Yeah. Um, we uh, we got to get Kaz healthy first. Shout out to him. Uh, he's been under the weather for the last several weeks, so um, I'm hoping that he gets healthy. And I already heard from Kevin; he's down. So, um. Now we just got to expand it to all the rest of the fellas and uh, see who wants to do what. I haven't talked Take to care. Jimmy, but, you know, I'm pretty sure he'll be down. Thank you. All right. So let's cut to the chase. How to be a failure in five easy steps. Now, when I give you these five, all you people out there, don't do it. It's the opposite. It's our sick and twisted way of saying, don't do these things. If you want to succeed in life, if you want to succeed on your job, if you want to succeed in your personal journey, whatever it may be, don't do these things. All right, show you ready? I am ready. Now, the, are these officially in order or are they, they I'm going in random? Order. I'm, I'm going okay. in order. I'm going in order. Gotcha. So step one, not caring. Now, if in any given situation, you say that you don't care about a situation or the pending outcome, then you're already lost. Why are you listening? Why are you watching? You're one sad piece of crap if you don't care and you're in a situation. Now, wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, why would you be in a situation if you don't care? So you really should care if you want to succeed. Yes, if the if the um okay, 
it depends on the scenario. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw okay. it at you from a self defense standpoint. Okay, Ooh, I like that. Um, one motto that I always teach my students is: it is rather it's better to be judged by twelve than carried by six. So, man, that sounds that, like an ice cubeism. So, with that being said, you know if. <laughs> If your life is in danger and you don't really care about the outcome except to survive, you know, it doesn't matter what you do to survive, then that scenario might not work. But now, if we're talking, if ahead. you're doing whatever you have to do to survive, wouldn't that mean that you do care about your life? Okay. But now we're now now we're nitpicking on what we actually care about. True. Yes, I care about my life, but do I care about their life? I care about protecting my family. Do I care about keeping him or them in their family? Okay, I get so that. You, you, we're we're picking nits when it comes to that, but. You know, and you know, but going off to where this normally is business and things like that. Yes, if you don't care, you will not succeed. You have to care. Have to. Have to have to care. And if you're a that. if you're a manager, you have to care about though your team that's under you, that you're that you're leading. You have to pay attention and care for them as well. And, and everybody and has to be pointed in the right direction. And this works just as well from a personal standpoint uh, when it comes to, you know, taking care of your family. We'll use providing for your family. You got to care. I mean, why would you be there in the first place if you didn't care about either having a family or being part of a family? So true. Dip. I mean, if you want to fail, don't care. Number two. Not trying halfway doing it or just getting by now as i get into this these are pretty self-explanatory terms and almost looks like not caring except you found your reason to be in this course of action but you lack the motivation to see it through in other words are you distracted what is your why so to speak uh how motivated are you and how much does it really mean to you? And, and that's where this part comes in. And I know a lot of people that they want this, they want that, but they don't really try. And if you're one of those people, you got to get some get up and go about you. Or you're going to be in that failure category. True. I mean, there's nothing more I can <laughs> add to that. Um you know, when I, I think part of that also comes to, let's say, okay, I want to lose weight, Rick. I, I do, but I'm not trying to lose weight. So I'm going to fail at losing weight, right? Right. I think also with this number two, especially when it comes to business, is you've done something maybe one particular way and it was successful. And now whatever paradigm has shifted in whatever market you're in or business loop venture that you're in, you have to kind of tweak your game plan. So you kind of know what to do to succeed, but you're just kind of half-assing it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to you have to be able to be flexible and, and mobile, I think, to go along with that to, to help you. I guess it also goes with number three. Yeah, I mean, all of these go hand in hand in one way, shape, or form. So it is, it is a, it's a work in progress. And again, these things, these examples that we are giving you guys are able to be used personally, professionally, uh, in a family structure, in a single structure. It's whatever. We we are. We're hitting you with a lot of information today, but we are also being vague because it's across the board. So we're trying to be transparent, yet uh, 
give as much information as we can, if that makes any yes. sense. Now, from our from our vantage point, from our viewpoint. Yeah. And remember, if you don't agree with us, we are slightly warped. And before I go to number three, I, I do want to uh, say if you guys have any questions, comments about this episode or anything else, make sure that you email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Just figured I'd slide that in now before I forgot. Now let's get to number three. Constantly procrastinating. Oh, and I'm an authority on this. I'll get to that in a second. Now this has a motivational issue of a different kind. Procrastination is sometimes because you don't want to do something, but more often than not, it's because you know you can get the job done, but you go slow or you slack because you like the thrill of doing things last minute and um, it doesn't bother you. Now, I said that I was going to talk about procrastination with me real quick, show. I've been known to do that, especially when it comes to, you know, work things or knowing I could get something done, knowing the deadline. And I go and wait until like, oh, it only takes me 30 minutes to do this. So I'll wait till I got about 40, 45 minutes left and I'll get it done. And I'll do the X, Y, and Z before then. I'm the king of doing that. And I know I got to stop on a lot of things, but it's because I know I can do it is when I do it. Now, You'll it has bit me a couple of times. It has bit me because something else comes up and then you're screwed or you get slowed down enough that you really kind of turn in a crappy job, so to speak, in order to get that job done. So it, and it, it, it will bite you. And you think that you have the time, but you really don't. Exactly. And that's what comes back to bite you. Yeah. Everybody's a procrastinator. I mean, that's hard. That one that says constantly procrastinating. So yes, we have those. You, I wouldn't say you're a constant procrastinator. Not constant, but I'm not going to lie. If there's an opportunity and I'm not feeling it 100%, I will take the opportunity to put it off. What is that saying? Procrastinators of the world unite. Is that is tomorrow? That is that because you're not caring and you're not trying halfway no, doing it? No. Halfway doing it comes into if you have to rush last minute, but you can care greatly about a project, but you can have such an ego to know that you can get it done, that you put it off. And I think that would make the work suffer. But do you really care then? I'm going to say yes, because a couple times I've waited to the last minute to uh, edit our podcast to put it out. But I really care about this channel and I really care about the podcast. So it varies. There you I go. won't say no and I won't say yes for everything. It, it varies. We're back to we're back to nitpicking, but still. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, you got anything else on procrastination? Um, other than, you know, yeah, I do. I, I'll tell you next week. <laughs> no, uh, you do, know, do we count that, that as the joke of the day? <laughs> no, no, I have a good one. I think. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so check it out. I want to go back to the thrill of it for procrastination. Just don't make it a habit is what I want to add. Don't make procrastinating a habit. Like my biggest procrastination, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. Mm -hmm. Folding the laundry. <laughs> really? I'm okay with putting it in the wash, taking it out of the dryer. Put Once I bring it upstairs, I'm like, man, I don't want to fold that. I still do I, it, I, you know, but, you know, it's just like, I don't want to do that. I'll, I'll watch this TV show first or I'll go do something else real quick or, you know. Yeah, I, I think we're all guilty of that one, too. Uh, going back to the thrill of it. um. Not so much in other things, but I do dabble in a little bit of artwork. And if I've, I haven't had this happen in a while because um, I do art in my spare time. So it's whenever I want to get a project done. But in art school, knowing I could do it, knowing I could do it fast, added to the thrill of it. 
Not going to say that that made the work more shoddy. It may have. It may not have. I'll never tell. Uh, But (laughs) there was a little thrill in that because I knew I could get it done. I knew I had the deadline, but I still wanted to do what I wanted to do. And and and, and I'll close it out there. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Sometimes if you want to be successful, you can't always do what you want to do when you want to do it. You have to cater to other things around you. To be successful, you can't always do what you want to do, but you must do what you have to do. That is true. I like that. So number four, this is a big one. Having too many people doing things for you. In other words, you're not self-sufficient. Now, I know a lot of people. I'm not going to mention any names and I'm not going to tell on y'all out there. But I know a lot of people that have a lot of people do things for them that you know you can do yourself. You may not like it. You may not want to. But in order to be more successful, you do have to be able to do things yourself. Now, I'm going to halfway shoot this down, but bring it back. You know how they say a successful coach or manager delegates? That's not where I'm going with this. That coach or manager or team leader or whatever, they still have to know the job. They still have to have done the job so that they can know how it is supposed to be. If you haven't been in that position, you should not be having people do things for you unless you can master them yourself. I've never, ever, ever had a problem with number four because I always thought that I could do it better. So I just did it all myself. That is me. That is so me. Um, And it sometimes gets me into trouble. So it gets me into a lot of trouble. So I'm not saying don't delegate. I'm saying make sure that you're an expert in it because the last thing you want to do is have somebody else responsible for your success or failure. Yes. Don't ever leave it in the referee's hands. No. Now, number five, this final step, how to be a failure in five easy steps. Thinking you've got it all under control or taken care of. Good example of that's going back to what we were talking about, procrastination. Let's say Ricky has to have a project done. Ricky's like, ah, it only takes 30 minutes. I'll get it here in an hour. And then we have an emergency come up. And I have to leave the house. Well, guess won't get what won't get done. So, yeah, you can't think you have it all under control. You have to plan for the unplannable. Uh, you have to be ready for something that you may not know anything about, but it can come up and it will come up. Um, yes, definitely trying to think of a good example of something that I've done like that. Um, Maybe in my youth, I would have done something like this, but you know, now that I'm of a certain age, I've learned not to think I've got it all under control because it seems like every time I do something happens, something always happens. It's kind of like in my business where I think I've got everybody dispatched for the week and they're running smooth and then boom, a tire blows Mm. or, or a load time has changed. And now that ripple effect has rippled all the other loads down the board that I've already, you know, booked and accepted and and are counting on that revenue. Now I have to go back and shuffle. And yeah, when you think that you got it all licked, you probably don't. That's that domino effect right there. Yes, sir. So, These are the five easy steps to uh, fail. Don't care. Don't try. Procrastinate. Too many people doing things for you and thinking you've got it all under control. Now, I want you guys out there, show me a successful person that has mastered all of these. And I'll show you a liar. That's right. All right. Anything else on because I failure? think you'd have to get I think you'd have to get all five of them 
consistently to never fail. And they're almost impossible to do successfully 100%. Agreed. Because cause five will kick you in the shins every time. Won't it, though? But then again, that's why I've, I've, I've learned to stay away from that one. All right. So we actually finished this one a lot sooner than I thought we would. But that's because we're on the same page. So that's right. Let's talk about some of these things that are going on in the news right now. All right. Um, and I'll just throw one out and you tell me. I'll start with the the worst one here. Uh, because we had some disturbing news out of Louisville a couple days ago. We had another uh shooting. This I don't even know what to say about this. I'm I, I'm out of words. Well, I happen to have a couple best friends that live in Louisville, live mm-hmm. in that area, and and Louisville is a war zone right now. It's been that way for a couple of years. Mm. From what I'm getting is it's it's really really bad. Uh, one of the guys just moved away from there. He actually moved uh, back to Joplin. But he was in Louisville for a couple of years, and then I got, we got another buddy that's there. Um, it, it's just really bad. There's areas you don't want to go into after dark, and 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 not really? like, not like just regular area, like you know, Kansas City. You can pick them out, right? This is the majority of the major city itself. Mm. Um, and Louisville's a beautiful place. I don't know if you've ever been, and I'm gonna I try to cross the. Right across the river from Cincinnati. So they're real close to each other. Uh, but yeah, he said it, it's really, really bad. But here we go back to what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, you know, guns, gun violence. And I'm a, I'm a double down on what I said then. You know, I'm not a proponent for getting rid of guns. I believe and everybody has the right to it, you know, even biblically, you know. The rock killed Abel and the rock killed Goliath. It wasn't the rock that was the problem. You know, True. it was the, it, you know, Cain was a bad person. And, and, and the rock killed his brother, He you know, but with David and Goliath, David was protecting his, himself and everybody else. So there's a time for guns, you know. It's just sad. I'm tired of hearing it. And this is different than a school shooting. This is this was at a bank. So, I mean, it can happen anywhere. That is true. Uh, while we are talking about this subject here, I'm going to play something for you. All right. Actually, I'm going to play something for everybody here. But. Oh, I'll start to feel special for a minute. Well, you're going to get it first. So. <laughs> Another high school shooting yesterday, this one in Florida, 17 dead, the last report I saw. And everybody sends their thoughts and prayers again because that works so well. This is the 18th high school shooting in America this year, and we have 10 and a half months to go. We've had 290 since 2013. We average about one a week, but there's just nothing we can do. If it was a Muslim or a Mexican doing the shooting, how many new laws and how much money would we spend then to stop the madness? But since it's almost always a white kid, there's just nothing we can do. America has 5% of the world's population and yet 31% of the world's mass shootings. We're worried about people coming to this country. They should be worried about us going to theirs. Australia had four mass shootings between 87 and 96. They passed stricter gun laws and haven't had a single mass shooting since. And here I thought guns don't kill people do. Is this the people we are? Last time I said we need to find a way to stop a nut with a gun, and that's all I said. I get an email saying, I'm saving my last bullet to put it right between your eyes. Just another responsible gun owner in America, and I'm taking all bets he's a white guy. So there's just nothing we can do. I'm Dale Hansen. It's getting harder to enjoy the day. I guess uh, Dale Hansen is... uh... He has a, a editorial at the uh, end of uh, most news segments on that channel. So, 
Interesting. I- interesting point of view. I'm not that he's wrong. I, I I think he hit the nail on the head. I mean, especially when he was talking about, you know, stricter gun laws. Um, you know, we could debate, you know, the race. But define stricter gun define stricter gun laws. Um, you know, that's a tough one because I know we can say we can make it harder for somebody to get a gun, but nine times out of ten, a lot of these people that get these guns have gotten them from someone else not yeah, they it's haven't not. purchased them so there, there's, so let there's... me ask you this let me ask you this mm-hmm. could you leave your house right now and go buy some crack or know somebody to go get some crack um wow i mean i wouldn't know the first place to go to get it but i'm pretty sure i could find somebody Right, you know people that know people that can get you if you if that's what you wanted, right? The same thing's yeah. going to happen with a gun if they make it that much difficult. I mean, I agree. I, I I'm, I'm 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 perplexed on both sides of the fence because yes, I think there needs to be some more rules in place to help stop this, but then again. That's the point of the country. I mean, it is in the Constitution, you know, the right to bear arms. You know, we have that yes. God given right. So I don't know. I go back to 9 11. We, we, we fix that. You know, nobody, nobody's going to be able to break into a cockpit anymore. They fix that. Let me ask you this. Did we did we tread on anyone's constitutional rights when we fixed that? Probably not. So do you think that there is a way that we can stop these shootings without treading on anyone else's constitutional rights? But we're not stopping people from trying to take over airplanes. We just made it more difficult to do so, i.e. stricter security. You have to go through X, Y, Z checks before you even get on the airplane. You know, and then once you're actually on the airplane, if you've bypassed and got through all those security checks and somehow I still got a weapon on that airplane, somehow I can't get in that cockpit. So how about this? Forget about the gun laws per se. Ways to make location safer then just like we do that uh extra security in public places especially our schools um you know extra lines of penetration so to speak i mean we can't put a police officer everywhere but we can put more locks on doors we can make doors safer i know it's pretty to have all glass doors glass can get shot up in a matter of seconds so yes. at some point we need to sacrifice uh looks for safety. And I think safety is what's going to make this a lot better. Safety will keep us from having our next uh public shooting just next week. And I hate to say just next week, but that's where we are. I mean, in his video that he just had, he mentioned uh Florida because I believe this was actually shot back in February or maybe early March. So we've had a what three since then? Yeah, at least major ones that have been yeah, you know, announced like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just like I mean, and he's right, you know. And let's just the people of my complexion tend to have that You know, you're not taking a gun from me. I'm going to say, like you said, I'm going to save my last bullet for you type of thing. You know, he's probably right. It probably was a white dude. Um, And there's right. There's just nothing we can do about it. It's sad. Um, This this country needs Jesus. This country needs more love. But there's too much hate being spread, and it's too easily spread. People are wanting... People want to receive negative more than they receive positive, unfortunately. They'll tell you different. They'll tell you different, 
but they want to look at the car wreck. Now, I will say this in advance. Uh, for those that love the show, see how much you love us next week because we might be talking more religion. Yes, sir. Um, winding this down, though, you know, I hate these somber tones because we are slightly warped. So I kind of want to, you know, bring us back up before we get out of here. So Heck yeah. I, I would greatly appreciate some humor from, from you, Mr. Big Show. All right. Let's see. Now, if you have children that are watching this, they may not want this part. You might want to just move away. This isn't necessarily a kitty joke, but I thought it was funny when I heard it. So basically, there was a farm, right? And mm -hmm. uh, the farmer was looking for his horse and he couldn't find his horse. And he walked out in the pasture and in the middle of the pasture, there was a big old hole and the horse was in the hole and couldn't get out. So he's like, well, let me help the horse out. The only vehicle he had available was his BMW. So he grabbed his BMW, took it out to the pasture, tied a, tied a, uh, a, a rope around the bumper, put it around the horse, pulled the horse out. Paid the horse, everything's fine, moved on to the next. Next day, the horse was trotting around in the uh in the field, and he noticed that one of the chickens had fell down the hole. Mm -hmm. And the chicken looked up at him and was like, Help me. And the horse is like, Well, I can't drive. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna lay across this hole. You grab a hold of my wiener and I'll pull you out. And so the chicken grabbed him and he pulled him out. It's not really a joke, but the moral of the story is if you're hung like a horse, you don't need a BMW to pick up chicks. <laughs> okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> I like that one. That's just the one we needed to end the show on. Retain our record as the most warped podcast in the history of podcasts. Yes, sir. All right, guys, tell us what you think. Like, share, subscribe if you're on YouTube. We appreciate each and every one of you. We're growing. Grow with us. Ryan, once again, like I appreciate fungus. you. Y yeah, <laughs> but the good kind. Appreciate you too, brother. All right, guys, you guys stay positive, stay blessed. Show, take us on out of here. Love each other. Tomorrow's not promise. See you next week.